Cybertruck was announced back in 2019 and I wanted it. Unfortunately, it's freaking huge. But imagine all that cargo space for your load. And the announced price Bruh. wasn't cheap. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to sell some kidneys. Since the Cybertruck was out of my reach, <laughs> annoying Elon Musk, it'll probably be delayed until 4023. I was determined to make one for myself that's better, faster, stronger, and triangular. Huh? Emphasis on the triangular. After many days of designing, developing, <laughs> and studying the Cybertruck, I finally made one that I could afford, but more importantly, one that fits in my garage. Oh, and uh, you can drive it with an app, which is perfect because I don't have a license. No! Before we begin designing our Cybertruck, let's do some research and copy, I mean, get inspirations from others on how they made their own version of the Cybertruck. First up is this interesting looking video. Bruh. <laughs> These guys put spray painted cardboard boxes on their car to make it look like a Cybertruck. That was a great parody, but not very useful for our design. Let's check out another video. Oh, they also use cardboards to make a Cybertruck exterior. All right, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. What's next? Okay, these guys literally made the entire truck out of a cardboard box. Even if I wanted to use cardboards to build our Cybertruck. Nibbles has dibs on all the boxes in this household, and I'm not allowed to touch them. The box. I need the box, Nibbles. <coughs> oh, whoops. I better blur this. My feet picks ain't free. Your boy's gotta make his money somehow in this shitty economy. Since cardboard boxes are off the table, we'll do the next best thing and make our Cybertruck out of boring old mechanical and electrical components. Now, the Cybertruck design can be divided into three main groups. Mechanical, electrical, and software. Mechanical components include the chassis, DC and stepper motors, wheels with rims, and the body. Huh? For electrical, we have various circuit blocks involving battery and power, motor controllers, processor with Bluetooth, and a vibrator. Wait, what? A vibrator? What the hell is this doing here? It clearly has a motor, which belongs with the mechanical parts. Bruh. Lastly, for software, we have the firmware controlling all the electronics and the mobile app to control the RC car using Bluetooth. Since electrical is my favorite out of the three, we'll start with electronics. Come on. Yeah! Yeah! The house that I can finally afford. And if you're wondering, software is my least favorite. It's because I suck at programming. Now, the main processor is the brain of our system, and because it'll determine how complex we can get with the entire project, I like to start off by choosing the processor chip before doing anything else. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which chip will I blow up next? Oh hey Nibbles, you busy? For our Cybertruck, I've chosen the NR52 processor. This chip is pretty fast for its size and has Bluetooth capability. But more importantly, you can snack on these chips while working on your electronics project. Mmm, chips. Before we start designing the circuit board for our tiny Cybertruck, we'll do some initial huh? prototyping with the electronics Bruh. that'll be used. So that if I do end up making any mistakes... Come on. Oh my god, what the f... Where are the stepper motor signals? This bug is so frustrating! Everything can be fixed before final production. For the electronics, I've designed four different test boards for prototyping. Power, which handles battery charging and voltage regulation. Motor controller, huh? which controls the DC motor going forward and backward. As well as a stepper motor for steering. LED driver, which will light up the car headlights. And the epic light show for Nibble's cat rave. And finally, we have the main board, which has our main processor with Bluetooth. Okay, let's manufacture these test boards using video magic. Nice! Three more to go! Huh? Bruh! Now obviously, it wasn't Video Magic that manufactured these PCBs, which is why I need to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring these circuit boards. Do you enjoy fast delivery and high quality products? Are you a hobbyist or a professional engineer looking into rapid prototyping the next Tesla car? Do you suffer from social anxiety and prefer to stay home making crappy YouTube videos to get online validation from strangers? Okay, that one was way too specific. Well, JLC PCB can definitely help you with that. Remember the world's smallest keyboard from my last video? That's right, they manufactured those keyboard circuit boards, so check out their link down in the description. With the test boards manufactured, we'll need to solder the components onto our circuit boards. Why can't you just stick on there, you stupid chip? 
Because we're building the world's smallest Cybertruck, I'll be using O201 sized components for this project. Just to give you guys an idea of how small these are, I normally use these O402 capacitors and resistors, and they measure around 1mm by 0.5mm. Now, these O201 components are approximately quarter of that size, and they measure around 0.6mm by 0.3mm. Yeah, they're super tiny. And yes, it was a pain in the ass soldering all these components on the test boards. Oh no. <laughs> No. <laughs> After everything soldered, it's time to test each test board, starting with the main board, which has the ARM processor with Bluetooth. Okay, programming the firmware and making sure the microcontroller is alive. Perfect. Now let's check if Bluetooth is functional. Awesome. Bluetooth is alive and connected. With the main board working, we can now connect all the other test boards to it for testing. Power looks good, battery is charging, and it's able to provide up converted 5 volts. Hmm. I'm getting an idea. LED driver looks good, but now I'm blinded by the lights. Motor controller can drive the DC motor forward and backwards, and the stepper motor driver is not working. I debunked the stepper motor circuit for several hours, and even after putting all of my two brain cells to work on resolving the issue, I was unable to get it working. Luckily, there's a popular stepper motor controller, the A4988, and I can easily replace the old circuit with this one. Wow. Connecting up the wires, uploading the stepper motor test program, and praying to the machine god, the one and only Omnisaya. <laughs> All right, the stepper motor's working. And with that, the electronics and firmware drivers are fully tested. Now you may be wondering, what exactly is this firmware? And why does this firmware have an operating system that was built from scratch? But more importantly, why did old Muskie rename Twitter to x.com? Because it sounds like I'm watching not safe for work content at work when I tell my boss I'm scrolling through X videos during my break. Don't know, who knows? But what I do know is my future self can tell you all about this new firmware. Hi, it's just Kim, here to introduce the new and crappy operating system, Bear Opsy. It has everything you'd expect from an OS, like the task scheduler, command line interface, peripheral drivers, and of course, a shit ton of bugs and unfinished features littered everywhere. Just like any other open source project. Don't think about the bugs, don't think about the bugs. Best of all, it comes with Bluetooth capability, and you can select between peripheral and central roles. Can't choose which one you need? Don't worry, because this OS lets you be both roles at the same time. Double the power consumption, yeah! And for all you nerds out there, it's based on the NR5 SDK. Uh, just Kim, isn't the NR5 SDK deprecated and no longer supported? No, it's not. No, it's not. You shut your goddamn mouth. It's in maintenance mode and still kinda supported, but it won't get updates beyond Bluetooth 5 and won't support any of the new processors with dual cores, Wi-Fi, and 5G. Ugh. Why did I choose this piece of shit? And this is all available for the low, low price of free. That's right. It's all available for free on my GitHub, just dash Kim. And if you leave a like and subscribe, you'll get an additional bear opsy for free. So don't wait any longer and get your bear opsy now. Thanks, just Kim. Now back to our regular program. Next on our to-do list is the mobile app to remotely control our tiny Cybertruck. For this this project, I've decided to use ChatGPT, uh, I mean Flutter Framework, and made a simple app. It can scan and connect to our Cybertruck to control the motors for moving forward and backward, as well as turning left and right. You can also access the command line interface on this tab for easier testing and debugging. Check it out. By doing some rewiring, I can turn on the vibrator wirelessly using my app. <laughs> Getting a little excited there. And because Flutter is cross-platform, the same code works for both Android and iOS. With the circuit schematic and software taken care of, we can move on to the mechanical design and the final PCB of our tiny Cybertruck. The mechanical parts are divided into three main areas. The front area has two hubs and a steering link for the front wheels, as well as the stepper motor to control the left and right steering. In the back area, there's a DC motor, which controls these wheels to go forward and backward. And lastly, we have the base, aka the chassis, which also doubles as our circuit board with majority of the electronics. Since we can recycle the same schematic that we've designed for our test boards, all we need to do is fit all the previously used components onto our new base. And once that's done, we're going to use Video Magic again to get them manufactured. <laughs> Now that we have our final PCB for our tiny Cybertruck, we can start soldering the components and test it. There's a lot of O201 components we need to solder, but this time, I'll be getting additional help. And I need to thank Tumla for sending over their new microscope. The DM201 Max Microscope is perfect for all your soldering projects. I can actually see the O21 pads without squinting my eyes. And the additional light along with the bright screen is perfect for you to work in any environment. You can also hook this up to your PC via USB and view it from your computer monitor. And using their external memory feature, you can easily share your videos with others. <laughs> Look, check out my tiny nuts. I'm definitely sharing that. The best part is, they were kind enough to provide a discount for my viewers, so if you're interested and want to support my channel, check out the link down in the description. All right. Huh? Now that we have the final PCBs ready to go, the only thing left is to 3D print our mechanical parts. And with that, we can start our final assembly.
over four months of work and it's finally assembled. Check it out. I made a connector to interface with the programmer and the USB for communication and charging the battery. Okay, let's do some quick tests with our mobile app. Back motor looks good. Front steering works as well and the command line interface is functional. All right, it's time for our first test drive. Here we go. Huh? Uh, why is there a tiny Cybertruck going in circles, even if we put the steering to the opposite side? Ah, I see the issue. There's not enough weight on the back wheels. Good thing I have some tungsten weights, and we can place them in the back area. Alright, let's retest our tiny Cybertruck with the added weights. It's looking good. It's able to go straight and turn left and right without issues. Last thing we need to check is the power consumption, starting with idle power with Bluetooth connected. And it's approximately 1.1 milliamps, which is not great, but okay for now. And with the motor on under load, current consumption is around 180 milliamps. So it'll last approximately one and a half hours with our 250 milliamp hour battery. Not bad, but we can do better. Like if we connect five of these 5,000 milliamp hour batteries to our tiny Cybertruck. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to thank Martin from Systemi for lending the P1125 power supply. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in accurate current measurements. Now, the very very last thing we need to do is make the exterior body. And I'm gonna be honest, it was pretty damn easy designing the body and it took less than one hour. I literally started with just a triangle shape, then made some minor adjustments. Okay, let's review the design with the rest of our tiny Cybertruck and make sure everything looks good. After, we can 3D print it, finish it up with some final touches, and with that, we have an exterior body. Check it out, I made the connector accessible from the top of the body for easier recharging and USB communication and put new set of wheels. Also, while you aren't looking, I replaced my Baropsy operating system with open source Zephyr OS. I'm sorry Baropsy, but you've been deprecated. <coughs> and of course, design files and firmware are available on my GitHub, just dash Kim. So go check it out. Alright, let's roll! Yeah, that took over three hours to edit. Anyway, let's get back to the video and measure our tiny Cybertruck. It's 66 millimeters by 31 millimeters by 24 millimeters. Pretty damn small. Okay, let's take this baby out for a spin. Nani? Bruh. I tried driving over the carpet as part of the video, but the tiny Cybertruck just couldn't handle it. Um, excuse me, I need to get to work. Could you please move? Huh? <sighs> I'll just make an exit on my right and take a detour. All right, it was a lot of fun making this video. And overall, I learned a lot and there's so much room for design improvements. I definitely plan on making version two of the tiny RC car. So make sure to click that subscribe button. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys want to see for future videos. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks everyone and see you next time.